Thank you for joining the Performance Management Seminars, where we tackle tough issues in performance management. My name is Victor Holman, and I am the CEO of Lifecycle Performance Professionals. The decision to implement a business intelligence technology is one of the tough decisions a company can make in terms of boosting productivity and increasing performance. How many times have you seen an organization spend tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars on business intelligence tools only to have that tool be underutilized, or even worse, it ends up on a shelf six months or a year later. According to a survey by General Research, inefficient use of business intelligence tools cost the organization, on average, $478,868 a year. The problem isn't that businesses aren't investing in business intelligence tools. The problem is they're not getting the most out of these tools. And even worse, they're not leveraging the information that they are getting out of these tools, leading to what I call the double whammy in their investments. The main reason for this global failure is simply because businesses aren't choosing the right business intelligence tools. They're not choosing the right tools to fit their architectural, their technical, and their data needs. Today, we're going to walk you through the steps of choosing a business intelligence tool. We're going to provide you with the different types of business intelligence tools. We're going to tell you the criteria to use when choosing a business intelligence tool. Uh, we're going to tell you some of the popular vendors in business intelligence. And we're also going to tell you the job functions and responsibilities you can expect from a typical business intelligence implementation. So what are the different tools in business intelligence? There are several types of business intelligence tools. Among them are ETL tools, OLAP tools, reporting tools, metadata tools, and data warehouse tools. Depending on how much data your organization generates, how the data is used and whom the data is used by, and the budget you are working within greatly affects how advanced your business intelligence solution will be. Here are some basic questions your organization must ask itself regardless of the type of business intelligence tool you're planning to implement. Do we intend to buy these products or build them in-house? What are the requirements of our business intelligence tools? What technical skills does my staff possess? What is our timeline for implementation? And what is our available budget for the task? When determining whether or not to purchase the tool and its services or build the solution in-house, there are several things to consider. If you're looking for a well-documented system with proven functionality, or if your time to implement is not within your staffing levels, then you are most likely better suited to buy an existing tool. On the other hand, if you're under a tight budget, if the system needs to be tailored to your specific service delivery, or if your staff has the proper expertise, you may want to consider building a solution in-house. We will get into details on the pros and cons of buying versus building for each type of tool. Finding a tool with the capabilities you need and within your budget sometimes means choosing a vendor that isn't one of the more popular or well-recognized. In these cases, there are three things to consider vendor stability, technical support, and professional services. Vendor stability may be the most important factor when choosing a business intelligence tool. A vendor that may not be around in one, three, even five years from now poses a great threat to an enterprise-wide solution. If a vendor is not around to provide updates and new features, the value and scalability of the tool diminish greatly. Do some research. Find out about the company's senior management. What experience do they have? How many successful products have they developed? How much does the company invest in research and development? What type of support is provided by the vendor? What are their support hours? Do they have a service level agreement to define their commitment to service? The industry standard for annual support fees is between 15 and 20 percent for the software license. What type of support will they offer? What are their consulting rates? What type of training is available? What level of consultant will provide the support? What products are the vendor's product compatible with? The first steps to establishing a business intelligence solution is identifying what database and operating system platform your tools will run on. There are several options and the best system may be used on your current system architecture. In making a selection for the database and accompanying hardware, the following must be considered. Scalability, parallel processing support, 
and relational database management system. Will the system be able to grow as your data needs grow? The main reason to design for scalability is to reduce cost and effort. Scalability is simply the system's ability to maintain performance as data volumes and complexities increase. Application design and construction, database connectivity, network capacity and bandwidth, back office services such, such as proxy and security services, and hardware server resources can all affect the scalability of your business intelligence solution. Also, support for parallel processing is critical when dealing with large databases and complex calculation. Parallel processing simply means that multiple processors handle parts of large tasks simultaneously in order to speed up the processing. Since the relational database management system sits on a hardware platform, there will be parts of code that is hardware dependent. This means that if you install a new version of the relational database or any other products from a relational database version into an existing code tree, you must replace each product in the old code tree with corresponding product from the new relational database version. In other words, there will be a lot of bugs and bug fixes that may create some headaches. Popular relational databases include Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, IBM DB2, Teradata, Sybase, and MySQL. Popular operating platforms include Linux, FreeBSD, and Microsoft. Valuable data exists in all sorts of heterogeneous systems and in many different formats. ETL, which stands for Extract, Transform, and Load, is a process that enables data to be moved from these multiple sources, reformatted, and loaded into another data source for analysis or business process support. The data used in ETL processes can come from any source, a mainframe application, an ERP application, a CRM tool, a flat file, an Excel spreadsheet, or even a message queue. Among other things, ETL software examines individual data fields and applies rules to consistently convert the contents to the forms required by the target repositories or applications. This example shows how a simple telephone entry from multiple data sources would need an ETL tool to convert them into a common format and load them into another data source. This illustration shows how data is taken from databases, applications, and other sources, transformed into useful data, and loaded into a target database and or file. While an ETL tool is not always necessary, your decision to purchase or develop an ETL tool should largely depend on three factors. Complexity of the data transformation, data cleansing needs, and data volume. The more complex a data transformation is, meaning the more your data needs to be converted in order to be read and utilized by the target source, the greater your organization will need to use ETL software. So it's important that you consider not only what your current needs are, but also the level of business intelligence you plan to possess in the future. If the data cleansing process involves removing typos or validating and removing corrupt values against a known list of entities, a tool with strong data cleansing functionalities would be most useful. Lastly, if your organization has large amounts of data to process, then a product which speeds up the movement of data would be the best solution. Here are some additional organizational questions to answer regarding your ETL implementation. How many sources are users going to extract the information from? What are your types of data sources, such as flat files, relational database management systems, ERPs, mainframes, legacy systems, Excel, etc.? What are the expected sizes of these input files? Is there a need to join information from different sources? What is the growth expected per year in terms of records, size, etc.? What is the current environment for staging areas? loading data warehouse and operating system. What is the budget for purchasing your, your ETL tool?